Hello, today we will be talking about action fanfiction. Now, if you might have noticed by now, some of these aren't actually the best categories to put them in. That is true. But I had to find some arbitrary way of separating some of these. And this was as good as it was really going to get. Unless I was going to put some in multiple categories and put others in others. And then I'd have to record all of them at once so I'd be able to make sure they were accurate. And Logistics. No. No, I, I do not have the time for that, I'm sorry. Starting off, we have Atonement by Cerulean. Taylor is dead after the locker, and Madison is almost Spider-Man. As the title sort of suggests, there is a lot of atonement done. And it is a rather nicer kind of story. It has It's, a, it's not a fix fix by any measure. It's very measured. Madison earns her own happy ending even though that happy ending hasn't technically happened yet. And this is also the story with which Cerulean sort of really came into the fandom, I'm pretty sure, and introduced their penchant for ridiculously mind-bogglingly unexpected twists. Sometimes called Cerulean Twists, trademarked. Next up, we have A Change of Pace by Adrian Graves. Taylor has the powers of Corvo from the sonnet. And so it starts off pretty generic, but then it gets rather interesting, and I'm not saying how because that would spoil things, but I would recommend you read this. Next up we have Clockwork by Somniac, which is essentially a bullshit steampunk-based tinker tailor. Don't think too hard about it, you can only make things out of a specific material, that material however is incredibly ridiculously strong, but it's a fun story. It is like a pulpy, like, you know, pulp fiction kind of story. You pick it up, you eat it, it's like popcorn, you, it's good. I would recommend it. Next up, Dominion, by Materia Blade, in which Kepri Taylor gets shunned and picked up by the Slaughterhouse Nine, and there is this, keep in mind the story has a horrifically distressing treatment of Taylor due to her powers, which is rather tragic and sort of shows the side of the PRT and, and Protectorate we haven't seen since Nilbog and uh, Canary, really. It is rather, it is really dark, but it is also very good. Because if there's one thing Material Blade is good at doing, it's writing good fiction. Next up we have Fucking Tinkers. Technically, dot dot dot, Fucking Tinkers. By Violet Shadows. So Taylor gets transferred post gold morning into the world of Sword Art Online, yeah? And the conflict is the fact that even though essentially Sword Art Online is very brutal in theory and it sort of should act like you'd expect Worm to, due to the fact that these are just, you know, are like RPG players and people just playing a video game, they don't have the same mentality as Taylor, who's lived in a world of Cyan for 17 years. And so, Taylor effectively acts as a traumatized war vet, and her viewpoint doesn't really translate over to the others. That creates a few interesting points of conflict and some other things. Would recommend. Next, we have Hand or Knee by Narcodoc, in which Lung and Defiant are dropped into the StarCraft universe and have their paths cross as they try and navigate a war. Armsmaster has the issue of his armor breaking down. Lung has the issue of being long. <laughs> Honest, honestly, that's really it. And it's just a very good study of character. They are very well characterized and I like how everything's done. Next, Here Be Dragons by Ryugi. This is the epic story. It's Taylor with Lung's powers escalating beyond all potential means. And it's also where the now probably dead meme, Jetpack Rage Dragon came from, or whatever the hell it was. This was escalation at its finest. This was pure chaos. So yeah, that's highly recommended. Next up we have Intrepid, also by Cerulean, in which Taylor and the trio embark on a clusterfuck of epic proportions. So what happens is there's four switching perspectives between the four, you know, Taylor, Madison, uh, Sophia, and Emma. It's really four different stories that intertwine at points. Now what's really good about this is that there's a lot of genuine character growth. People realize the mistakes, they try and, at they try and fix things, and it's just all horrific 
but it all does start to seem like there's hope. And then a Cerulean twist comes on and it's BAM. Good game. No Evil Shall Escape My Sight by Rhaegar. In this, Taylor is the Green Lantern of Sector, whichever the hell it was that had Earth. I'm sorry, I don't actually read comic the comics that intently. Um, it had some odd pacing. It's definitely dead. But it's worth looking at. It has a few interesting uh, sort of slice of life, sort of like more chill parts, and then it just has action. Boom, action. Boom, action, chill, action. Hence me mentioning odd pacing, but you know, it, I'd recommend it still. Next up, Outsider by Fallen Druid. This is one of the few Lara Croft Taylor stories that came out after the 2013 release of Tomb Raider. In Outsider, Taylor has justifiably major PTSD. Like, major PTSD. And is the Outsider. It, but it's good. It is good. I would recommend all this and every other Lara Croft's uh, Taylor, really. Next up, we have Resonance by Overt Concerns, in which Taylor controls sound waves. Or sound in general. Or can it... I don't even... It's broken. It's overpowered. But Overt Concerns takes that in a very enjoyable and readable direction. So I have no concerns with that. Next up, we have Stormborn by Agayek. Another Lara Croft Taylor. Which, unfortunately, only had like three or four sh chapters, but was good while it lasted. Stronger, also by Overt Concerns, in which Taylor has the power of Dauntless and starts imbuing things and making badass things happen. And it lasted, I think, about three arcs? I can't remember, it's rather old by now, but at the time it was just such a pleasure to read that I would recommend it even now. Next up we have A Survivor Is Born, which is probably the crown of the Lara Croft Taylor stories that have come out of that. A Survivor is born, written by Heather Sinclair, wherein Sophia somehow manages to befriend Lara Croft Taylor. And if you've ever heard the killdozer phrase being thrown about, this is where it came from. It also involves Taylor learning martial arts and a lot of other stuff that is quite nice. I would highly recommend this one. Next up, Synesthesia, also by Zomniac. Taylor is the composer from The World Ends With You. There is one potential complaint with this that I've heard from some, and I will just address it right now. It starts off as near street level action and just scales up and becomes an all out war. Though, to be fair, if you look at Omniac's previous writing, you'll see how this sort of happens. They have a habit of writing things that just escalate and get out of hand rather fast in a rather interesting manner. <laughs> Next up, Through the Rabbit Hole by Ferio Knox. So, Taylor lived through the events of Far Cry and is rather traumatized. Taylor lived through the events of Far Cry and is rather traumatized. This came out along with the wave of Lara Croft Taylor's. I'm not sure if that has any connection, but it is really awesome. And the interesting twist here is that after all the shit that happened, she never actually triggered. And so they're dealing with a badass normal Taylor that can like just wreck, wreck house. And they're pretty sure she does it without any potential power. So yeah. It's also a really good story to remind people that only like one in four people or however many actually have the potential to trigger in the first place and not everyone has that to begin with. Next up, Wildfire by Chibi Po. This is a story that doesn't involve Taylor. It involves fire and if I say anything else it's going to start spoiling things. But it was rather interesting and the fandom has a dearth of anything that isn't a t Taylor point of view. So I would highly recommend reading this. Plus it's Chibi Po. And finally, we have Wild's Home for Parahumans by Selwyn. It's a self-insert, technically. But it's not themselves, I do not think. Regardless, they... Essentially, the Wild, right, Wild, uh, knows Worm, gets shoved into Worm, and opens a home for parahumans who, like, or really a shelter, not really a home. A shelter for those that either don't have anywhere else to stay or are being pursued by someone for some reason or other. It is a story of great character interactions, of great characterization, and it just... Wilde has, some, to some degree, the same problem that Taylor does. She does things and she doesn't stop. She is stubborn as hell and will do everything in her power 
with every ounce of willpower she has to get shit done. And it was just such a refreshing story as well. Because once again, not Taylor point of view. A plot point is the fact that she gets put into the story before Taylor uh, triggers. And so she has to be careful, otherwise too many butterflies will change the course of the world. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things there as well. And yeah, that's all the... Yeah, that's all the action fix I have, really. Nothing much to it besides that. If you guys feel like I've missed anything, or if you guys want to disagree with me on anything, feel free to do so and just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye!